and welcome everyone here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the first part of Bilgewater, our review here for the Rising Tides set, the first expansion set for Legends of Runeterra. We're going to be, uh, there's a brand new region here, Bilgewater. We're going to be splitting up the Bilgewater review into two parts um, as we talk about all of the cards. Well, we're going to start first with going through all the cards that cost zero to three mana with part one, and then part two, we'll be talking about all the cards that cost four to nine mana. Um, just kind of splitting it almost in half there. This one will have a little bit more than half. But first, let's look at our champions. We'll look at the champions, I guess, that just cost zero to three. So there's two champions here. Next one, we'll have three champions. But first up is Fizz. This is a card that a lot of people look at and think will be very annoying. But let's, let's check it out. So it's a one mana champion. So our second one mana champion that we have in the game, Teemo, was the other one. But now we'll have uh, Fizz as a one mana, two one. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, give me elusive and stop all spells, all enemy spells and skills that are targeting me. Uh, so that's, that's obviously pretty powerful. Um, and then it levels up when you've cast six plus spells this game. So any, like if your opponent, if you're trying to use removal on Fizz, the owner of Fizz can just cast a spell and every spell acts as deny. You know, it stops all of, you know, like if you try to Mystic Shot Fizz, they play a one mana spell. Um, like they could play their own Mystic Shot on something else that also counters your Mystic Shot. Basically, it's going to be pretty hard to kill Fizz with direct damage. And so that's why I see, that's why a lot of people think that Fizz is going to be really annoying. But honestly, um, at that point, then Fizz also grants elusives. But honestly, I, th I think this, this champion's not going to be as, like, that's not going to be as good. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Like, that's good. That's going to be a very good ability, but I think Fizz overall may underwhelm people some. Um, first, let's see what the level up does, though, because the level up, whenever you, before I kind of start talking about play patterns, when you cast six plus spells, that's not too difficult to cast six spells. All right, so you cast six spells, you have a leveled up Fizz, and, you know, you can play Fizz later on in the game and uh, cast the six spells. Um, so, uh, all right, so now we play our leveled up Fizz for only one mana. Then whenever you cast a spell again, grant elusive and stop the enemy spells and skills targeting it. But then if if Fizz strikes, you create a chum in the water, chum the waters. That's not that's not like a an ephemeral like a fleeting chum the waters. That's you you create this in hand. You get to draw a chum the waters that's just in your hand now that you can cast whenever you want. <clears throat> and so then whenever you do cast from the waters that's a four mana card that grants an enemy vulnerable and summons a long tooth so basically we're talking about a four mana five one overwhelm plus you also give one of your opponent's creatures vulnerable it's important that that's a spell also because you can cast this pre-combat give like one of their things vulnerable get your five one overwhelm and then also grant fizz elusive um Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. I mean, if you remove a Mystic Shot, it's in it. It's yeah, that's true. One, yeah, you're uh, a one mana Fizz for something bigger. Okay, so basically, what I think is with Fizz is I think it's actually going to be pretty difficult to connect with Fizz because we are talking about a two one, not an elusive two one. You can cast a spell to to give Fizz elusive. So, let's say you're playing Fizz, your opponent has stuff out, you have stuff out. You want your Fizz to connect, so you have to cast a spell pre-combat to grant Fizz elusive to um, to be able to connect. So you're telling me that you have to cast a spell to give Fizz elusive, like we're talking about. If you do that, then then they could use removal on your Fizz, but then you'd have to have another spell to stop, um, you know to stop that spell so it's it's not like it's not like the fizz is just going to be a, a an always elusive unit that's just beating down and you just use spells to um counter your opponent's spells you know with fizz it's not always elusive like so that's like the thing is um i think connecting with fizz is going to be more difficult than people think um 
you know, because so basically just when you're playing against Fizz, you want to just not cast your spells into their open mana. You just want to have like your your own creatures be there to block and force force the Fizz player to cast spells first to grant Fizz elusive first. Sorry, my dog is scratching up my chair. Sorry. Um, so you have to, yeah, like that's that's basically what you want to do. Um, yeah, and then and then of course other things. Fizz starts at one toughness, and as we've seen, um, and as we will see in this region also, there's a lot of things that do one damage in this set, especially in this region. So there's a, there's going to be a lot of ways to kill Fizz that aren't just targeting, you know, that just does like one damage to all enemy units, does one damage to everything, like that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of one toughness things, but with all that being said, I think Fizz is going to be a pretty good card because it's hard to kill, and I think Fizz will secretly be like a, um, I guess I want to click over here, secretly be like a six mana one drop that you want to play later on in the game where maybe you have some some extra spells to protect, but then where it turns into a 3-2, like the 3-2 Fizz is going to be a lot more valuable than the 2-1 Fizz kind of thing. Because striking the opponent early with this isn't really that big of a deal. It's two damage. It doesn't, it doesn't help level up. It doesn't trigger like Teemo triggers on turn one. That's not important. It's after Fizz is leveled up, then you want to be striking your opponent with this Fizz and then creating your Chump the Water. So... Uh, this is secretly like a, a six mana one drop kind of thing where you don't need it right away but uh, yeah but then besides that uh, fizz will be kind of difficult to connect with um, unless they try you know like what are they going to try like before you attack on your turn then they try to kill your fizz so then you you protect your fizz and now it has elusive and now you attack elusively i feel like that's just never going to happen the only time you only use removal on your opponent's fizz like on your turn where granting the elusive doesn't matter if they they use a spell to stop it you never like if you're against fizz you should never cast a removal spell before fizz attacks normally if you have a blocker you should just never never need to Um, yeah and then as the fizz player yeah that's true as the fizz player ideally if you're the fizz player you then you can cast spells pre-combat you know that that spells that do stuff not just spells just to simply grant fizz elusive like you know maybe removal spell before combat um the thing is, is, you know, casting stuff as we've played, when you play Legends of Runeterra, as you notice that a lot of times going to combat immediately is more valuable than casting stuff first and letting the opponent cast stuff and all that kind of stuff before combat. Um, obviously, burst spell works well, burst speed works well, but burst speed spells aren't usually like removal. They're usually like pumps and protection and things like that. Um, All right, and then finally, the the um, champion spell for Fizz is this Playful Trickster, and I think this card is pretty good. So four mana fast, remove an, an attacking ally from combat to rally. So if you think about three mana rally, this is one extra mana that's remove an attacking ally from combat. I, I feel like that's that's honestly pretty good. Like you, you, it allows you to open attack in with a whole bunch of stuff. They make a, a good block where one, one of your allies is going to die, and then boom, Playful Trickster, keep it alive, also rally during combat, so then your opponent only has one um, opportunity to play something after combat before it's your priority again, and then you get to attack again right then. So, um, Yeah, I, I don't know about, st you know, standalone Fizz, I mean... Maybe I mean then you know if you're doing standalone fizz you're not you're not playing Ionia, so you don't get Zed. Um, I feel like that's probably worse than regular standalone. Then you don't get you know if you go off standalone Zed or standalone fizz then you're not playing standalone with either Zed or 
the 4-3 elusive. You know, you're not playing that either because you're not playing Ionia. So, but yeah, that's Fizz. This is going to be a controversial card, uh, but I think it's going to... I think it reads better than what it plays, but with that being said, it's still pretty good. I, I really like it as a late game super cheap champion more than a play this on turn one and get this out and, and play right away. I don't think it... Yeah, I don't think you need to play this right away. I think you, you really want to uh, wait for this to be leveled up. All right, and then our other champion to cover for part one will be Miss Fortune. Misfortune, whenever, when allies attack, deal one to battling enemies and the enemy Nexus. That's a really good ability. So we got a three mana, three, three, which is, which is perfectly fine. You know, it's not, it's basically right on curve um, as far as like how big like the thing should be, you know, like three mana, three, three, four mana, four, four, five mana, five, five, and so on. Um, you know, so it's, it's perfectly reasonable at, at three, three, um, but I like how it's when allies attack, not not misfortune. Misfortune doesn't have to attack. You can attack with other allies. You can attack with like one scout, um, and then it does one to battling enemies in the enemy nexus. And then you get to do it again or something like you know with a normal attack. So you don't have to send misfortune out into combat um, and you know make her vulnerable in combat. She can sit back and you can still. Um, have that first ability doing stuff. So it's not like, you know, like a Nivea. If you think about like, a, like when you attack with a Nivea, it's basically a Nivea trigger, right? Um, so it, it turns all of your creatures into a Nivea. You know, if you attack with anything, you get the, you get the Nivea trigger. Um. <clears throat> and so, yeah, like scout, so scout with that is awesome, right? Like you, you can send like your scout in, get your Nivea trigger, it's kind of like an Anivia trigger, I guess. It's only the battling enemies. I guess it's not it's not all of their enemies. It's just the battling ones. So it's a it's a weaker Anivia trigger. Um Yeah, and then and then you know you leveled up when I've seen you attack four times. So again with Scout, if you get to attack twice when you play Misfortune and you know, maybe you rally, get some extra attacks. Yeah, Scout and Rally, same region. Um Then I guess the I guess that skill is called Love Tap. <laughs> and then... When Misfortune levels up, this card look, gets real good. Because then it turns into a 4-4 four, four Overwhelm. So basically, you know, Draven size. You know, like, this is 3 mana, 3-3 three, three to start with. And then turns into the 4-4 four, four Overwhelm. So it's, you know, it's basically like Draven size. Um, when allies attack, deal 1 three times to battling enemies and the enemy nexus that is just awesome so you know you get you get those three triggers and again misfortune doesn't have to attack um then you get bullet time deal one three times to battling enemies and the enemy nexus the important thing here is that like this skill it's like bullet time is not three separate skills where do, it's not three separate love taps where you deal one and then you deal one and then you deal one like basically this this is important for um powder kegs that we'll talk about here in a little bit powder kegs basically add the damage in and so this would do like a powder keg with this would do two damage three times because it's it's the one skill that resolves it at the same time um so yeah so one one powder keg is six damage and so on and then if, if you have, you know, three powder kegs in play, you're doing four damage three times. You know, it's 12 damage. But anyway, it's it's going to be kind of tricky getting Misfortune to, to level up because, you know, you have, you have to play her and then attack four times. It's not the easiest thing to do. But even if you don't, this is still a, a good trigger. Especially, it's a very powerful trigger, especially with a card that only costs three mana. So I, definitely seems like something you want to put in an aggressive deck. You know, maybe you have this paired with, you know, besides pairing it with Scout and Demacia, you know, you could also pair it with like Noxus where you're going wide with uh, 
um, House Spider and Arena Battlecaster and stuff like that, where your opponent wants to put a lot of blockers out because you're doing a lot of damage. If they want to put a lot of blockers out, you know, like that one damage can can maybe clear out some of their blockers and, and things like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this is a, a pretty good champion. I like this champion. I think it's, it's not, like, overpowered, but, you know, it's kind of similar to a lot of the other three mana champions in the game. Um, yeah, pretty good. All right, let's take a look at some of the other cards. So we got Warning Shot. Yeah, that's true. If if she had quick attack, she'd be a lot better. You know, make something where she could get into combat also easier. Um, yeah, quick attack. Yeah, that would make her a lot better. All right, so Warning Shot is zero mana deal one to the enemy nexus. So the obvious reasons to be playing more... The most obvious reason to be playing Warning Shot and why this card is printed is because of... Um, is because of plunder. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my again, my dog is just scratching up my chair. Uh, even though this is a, a plunder enabler, I don't think you should put this in your deck. I don't think that you should just be playing Warning Shots to trigger plunder. Like, I just don't think that's worth an entire card, you know, like, that, that you draw. Um, there's going to be times that you're going to get this off of, like, a Karma that gets you, like, a random spell and you get a Warning Shot and you're going to be bummed. But I don't, I don't think this is really worth it most of the time. All right, next. Uh, one mana jailbreak. Uh, it's a slow spell speed. Summon a random one cost follower from any faction. Again, we're not really putting this in our decks. Um, if, if you have something that you really need more spells, but you should probably want to put the the one cost follower that, that you want to play in your deck. And not this. Um, these could be, yeah, for, for, two, for the two spell tribal decks. Maybe. Um, why did this go here? What is... Hmm. That's weird. Okay, so... This side is still... It's still acting up. So what's... Okay, so this is supposed to be the, the next card. But yeah, um... Jailbreak, not, not too excited about it. There's a lot of one one mana cards. <laughs> uh, one mana, one one for Crackshot Corsair. When allies attack, deal one to the enemy Nexus. Eh, so, you know you're just playing a one mana, one one, and it's you know basically if you, it's like the uh, card in Noxus, the one mana two one that whenever it attacks, it does one to the enemy Nexus. Except for this is a 1-1 one, one instead of a 2-1, and it's whenever any ally attacks. So this thing doesn't have to attack to get you that trigger. I think I'd rather have the thing that can attack for 2 itself than this. Um, but obviously this is in a different region. So if you're like a real aggressive Bilgewater deck, um, maybe, but probably not. Bilgewater champ that gives one drops plus one when plunder. Maybe. I guess I don't know that card. Okay. Yeah. And then this is for plunder. Yeah. This does help turn on plunder. That is true. This does really help turn on plunder. Because it doesn't even have to attack itself. Just you attack with anything. You, you've turned on plunder. So maybe. But again, I feel like you just want to put like really good card. Like I feel like like deck building, like you want to just have your deck have as many good cards as possible cards that are just good on their own as possible um maybe like you have to have a just an absolute ton of plunder stuff like where plunder is so vital for you to put something like this in, in your deck honestly um so like think about like if you're behind and you draw that card you're dead you just you just lost the game 
All right, dredge dredgers, dreg dredgers. When I'm summoned, toss three. I think this is a very playable card in a Maokai deck. One mana, two one. Like now we're talking because now a two one can actually trade up. Um, you know, can trade with two twos and three twos and stuff like that. Um, you know, now we're talking at two one. I wish that other card was a two one also, but two one we're talking. And then of course it has the toss three. Um, it's probably going to die. It's very, you know, it's very easy to kill this thing. And so you can basically think of it as four cards towards the Maokai 25 that has to happen because you'd have the three that are tossed and then the dread dragon dredgers that also. So definitely very good in a Maokai deck and, you know, just reasonable one drop. You're probably just playing it in a Maokai deck. All right, we talked about Fizz. So one mana, two, two with plunder, grant me plus one, plus one don't this card's okay it's just a strict upgrade on Scythria right in Demacia the one mana Scythria is a 2-2 and you know one mana Scythria is okay it's if you need a one drop with Demacia you know you maybe will play some Scythrias it's not it's not anything you're excited about it's not anything you really like to draw that much later in the game but it's it's playable and that's kind of where Jagged Butcher is it's an upgrade on that it's still playable but it's not like a huge upgrade but yeah you can have plunder and it can be a 3-3 and then you know as a 3-3 it's it's pretty decent um yeah that's true Scythria is an elite that's true but um yeah so this you know it's still on turn one making a 2-2 that's that's fine that's you know that's that's not bad it, especially with all the things that do one damage these days again that that second point of toughness is pretty good but once you start talking about a 3-3 there's a big big difference between a 2-2 and a 3-3 and so if you you know if this is like best case scenario is you have a regular one drop you attack and then uh hmm i guess it would be i guess it would be uh, well like you don't have the attack okay so you play a one drop on turn one um they play nothing it goes to your turn you attack with your one drop they don't block you do damage and then you play a jagged butcher or maybe two jagged butchers on on turn two you go double butcher and get two three threes that's like best case scenario <laughs> yeah you could play warning shot zero mana do one damage and then one mana play jagged butcher and you got a one mana three three on turn one and you use two cards it is possible all right, jettison one mana toss four. I don't like it. I like. I'd rather have my one mana toss four bring along a two one body that can block. You know, I don't. I don't like this uh, burst speed. Just toss four. Not a fan. Parlay. All right, parlay. Which they seems like they mis misspelled parlay. I'm not sure. Maybe that's how you spell parlay. Parlay. One mana, deal one to anything. If this kills it, deal one to the enemy nexus. If this was fast speed, this card would be incredible if this was fast speed. Um, at slow speed, it's it's a little rough, but because of how valuable plunder is and because this can be removal and not just one damage to the opponent. Like this is actually one damage to anything. You can, you can use this as one damage to the opponent to turn on plunder in a pinch, but you can also have this, you know, this is just much more versatile. One damage to anything, you know, if you kill X ones um, and then also get the enemy Nexus trigger, that's a bonus. If, um, you know, sometimes you need to get a 6-5 into a 6-4 for something else, you know, that's good too. I like this card. I think that while not overtly powerful at all, you know, it's very similar to Blade's Edge, of course. Um where the metagame is going or just like how how valuable some some cards have dealing damage to the enemy nexus this is a card i could see playing like i'd rather play this than some of those other options that we saw like i'd rather play this than the one mana one one that whenever you attack you do one i'd rather have have this because this can this to me is more versatile and it can um, help you finish off like a large creature um get that extra damage I certainly wish this was fast speed because fast speed you can take out a barrier. Um, fast speed would be 
Fast speed, this card's really playable and it's like everywhere, like you're playing this card. Slow speed makes this a lot worse. Yeah, so plunder, plunder is a play trigger, so it's not a summon trigger. It's a play trigger. It happens one time when you play the um, the card. And yeah, so it's not a summon. You can't uh, you can't have like a, a War Mother's Call going and and you know get plunder triggers. <laughs> Poro, GG, Insta Tier One deck. Yeah, Plunder Poro is pretty awesome. Plunder, grant me two random keywords. Pretty awesome card. Got great art. Um, just check out that that Poro Plunder in. This this is a just this is a great card. I love it. I love it. Pool Shark. One mana, one two. When I'm summoned, draw one fleeting next round. I like how that's next round that's, that's kind of cool this is still not playable at all um i guess there there i think there's there has to be a bilge water card that really cares about one mana one drops as somebody was saying earlier i i'm not sure what card that is um you know we'll see what it is whenever we get there i guess but there are a absolute ton of one drops um but yeah this is like a one two not excited. I do you get to draw one fleeting the next round. But don't know if that means we're putting pool shark in our deck. Probably not. A ton of one drops. I guess okay, yeah, so you play it play it with um you have to you have to spell out the champions. What's what's TF? Because I'm I'm not from League of Legends, so I'm not I'm not good with like the abbreviations. Um. Twisted Fate. That's right. Because I always because th just probably because misfortune. I just keep on thinking the F is fortune. You know, like that's that's like the word I keep that just pops up in my mind for the F is fortune. But yeah, Twisted Fate. Um. So Twisted Fate wants you to draw eight cards. To level up we'll, we'll talk about twisted fate some more later so you do need to draw more cards with twisted fate but basically you're never going to level up twisted fate and I, I wouldn't play a card like this to try to level up twisted fate because it's just not happening and it, it it's just not it just doesn't matter you you just need to play good cards and this is just not a very good card All right, so we have one mana, one one prowling cutthroat. It has fearsome and elusive. Okay, so we're elusive for our one mana, one one. And it is fearsome, so it can only be blocked by small elusive units. This could be a card. Um, <clears throat> I like this one drop more than some of the other one drops. This so, something you definitely need to pump up. Yes, yeah, so you're probably playing this with like uh, the pumps from like Frel Yord or uh, something else like that. Like this is something that you, you want to have to be a larger um, thing, but you know, like that's that's a threat that's that's difficult to deal with. But overall, probably not not very good. All right, another one mana, two one with a tune. This is one of the better one drops. Um, again, two one, we're at least getting three total power and toughness, so we can, you know, this is turning into more playable, and it re replaces itself with mana. You turn your one regular mana into one spell mana. So if, you know, depending on how you build your deck, if that that spell mana can be valuable, um, you know, I, I I can definitely see playing this. This this allows you to play a card like this on turn one. Um, you can even, I mean you can play more of them on turn two anyway, but you can play like spell shockers on turn one or turn two So you can have like some interaction and block and stuff and then you can still go like a six mana remembrance on three to turn on your mage seekers um, Just as an example, you know, but just other stuff like that um, I like 
I like spells that have the attune for the same mana they cost. It's not bad. Uh, is this the hardest unit to block in the game? No, it's probably the Undying. The Undying is probably the hardest unit to block. Never want to block that thing. Or no, Cursed Keeper? I guess Cursed Keeper. Cursed Keeper has got to be the hardest to block, right? Like, you just can never block Cursed Keeper. Nobody ever blocks that card. Has Curse Keeper ever been blocked? Maybe not. Curse Keeper's gotta be the hardest thing to block. <clears throat> You've seen it? You've seen Curse Keeper blocked? Oh. Maybe by like a Braum? Like Braum's like the only thing that can block that thing. <laughs> Weirding stones. It's like two total cards. Yeah. <clears throat> Ye been warned. Another one mana card. This card is slow. Give an enemy vulnerable this round. If it dies this round, draw a card. I like this card. Granting an enemy vulnerable, it's pretty valuable. Obviously, it's slow speed, but it's not like... Like, let's say you... You know, you don't have to target your own unit for this. Like, you're just targeting your opponent's unit. So it's not like they're going to, um, you know, break it up with, like, a removal spell or something. But yeah, you know, it turns any of your things into Challenger. Um, it's a spell that forces you to play it before you attack, which we know that's the least valuable time to play spells is before, be instead of going straight to attacks. Playing spells outside of combat. But even with that being said, this can, you know, be a removal spell that also draws a card for one mana. Yeah, it has a lot of potential. Yeah, if it, if it cantrips, uh, you're really doing it. Even if you don't have a, even if you don't have a, a unit in anything in play that can challenge you can still like play this and then play a removal spell and then and just cycle and just one mana draw a card and you know nothing wrong with one mana draw a card just replace itself you know like let's say you you play this on something and then you know use whatever removal spell you want yeah not bad All right, Black Market Merchant, 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. When you draw an enemy card, reduce its cost by 1, and it also has Plunder, draw 1 from the enemy deck. I like this card, and there is there is a good amount of, like, draw from the enemy deck synergies. Like, that's that's a real strat, or just some, some cards that are just pretty good with that here in Bilgewater that we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I like... I like this card. Um, oh yeah, kind of good Good with Maokai. Um, yeah, so you, you steal the card. So basically, because you're drawing it. So you don't, yeah, so it's not a copy. So you do steal the card. So you take a card out of their deck. Um, if you're lucky, you grab one of their champions, you know, but you're, you're drawing a random card. You know, it's basically like you draw the top card of their deck. Um, And then you know you reduce its cost by one, but yeah, if you if you level up Maokai and destroy their library except for four cards, and then you play this thing with Plunder, and draw one of those four. <laughs> um, I I mean I like this card. You know, two mana, two two draw. Like, if Plunder is turned on. Again, you have a 2 mana 2 2 draw card. Obviously, Silent Assassin is everywhere. It's 3 mana 2 2 draw card with Elusive. This is draw one from your enemy deck, which is probably worse than drawing one from your deck, just in general, right? Like, wouldn't you rather draw one of your cards than one of your enemy's cards? Probably. But um, over the long haul, probably. But it's going to have some high variance. You're going to sometimes just take a champion from them and then, and then they don't get that champion harvey stop stop 
Um, and its cost is reduced by one. All right, two mana, one, two, a tune. So again, you, you refill one spell mana. That's what a tune is. I really don't like that a tune is always one mana. I, I kind of wish that a tune had a number, a tune one, two, or three, you know, because you can refill either one, two, or three spell mana. You know, I wish like, um, uh, you know, like the, uh, oh, Whatever, the, you know, like the three mana card that um, all the Heimerdinger decks play. I wish that just had a tune three. You know, you could just have a tune one, a tune two, a tune three. Just kind of gives, it would give the keyword more flexibility to be used. Um, yeah, same thing with deep probably. Yeah, it does narrow design space quite a bit. I guess they want it, they want people to always know what a tune does, but I don't think that's, that's a big deal at all. Like, I don't think there's... I really don't think there's any difference to knowing what a tune does and then knowing what a tune does and then saying the number one, two, or three. I just I just don't think that there's there's much of a difference there. Like that that doesn't seem like a, a you know um because if you know the card has a tune, you probably know the card has a tune one or a tune two. Like if you have to check to see does this card have a tune, you can check you know you can check to see if it, what what number of a tune it has. I just don't think there's like any barrier there. I don't think there's any barrier between a tune or a tune one, a tune two. Yeah, the PNZ two one should be a tune two. Yeah, I think that that clean that I honestly think that cleans it cleans up some of those other cards. But anyway, so this is a two, let's talk about this card though. Coral creatures two mana one two, terrible body. You know one two for two mana. That's really bad. But you do refill one spell mana, and when I'm summoned, create a random one-cost spell at hand. Which there's a whole lot of random one-cost spells, especially in this region. So it is creating a new spell for you. Is that really that valuable? Eh, I don't know. Um, this is, you know, if if you're playing a deck where you're trying to play a whole lot of spells, like we're we're just playing a lot of playing a lot of spells is valuable, you know, including allies and spells. Um, just playing a lot of things is, is valuable. Um, playing two mana things, if that's valuable. Um, all that kind of stuff. Things, if you can reduce cost or, you know, I don't know. All that kind of stuff. But just a singular one-two for two mana is really, really poor. And sure, you get a random one-cost spell, but I don't think this is going to see much play. Unless, uh, yeah. And that, unless uh, you need those synergies. All right, Dreadway Deckhand. Two mana, two, two. When I'm summoned, summon a Powder Keg. Now we're talking. All right, Powder Kegs. Zero mana, zero ones. So they take up a slot on the battlefield because it is a zero one. <clears throat> so that takes up one of your six slots. But additional Powder Kegs will just keep stacking on top of each other. So the Powder Kegs do stack. So you can have like two, three, four Powder Kegs all in the same spot. Powder Kegs are vulnerable. So your opponents can attack and kill them. They can't block. You can't just like have your powder keg normally block and it can't attack. So it can't attack, it can't block, and it's vulnerable. So it's very easy to get rid of them, but you know, they're just kind of thrown out there. All right, but what powder keg says is that all of your spells and skills deal one extra damage. So this is like Funsmith, right? So you get Funsmith's ability with this powder keg. Um, and then it destroy destroy me when your spell or skill damages enemies. So not not just the enemy nexus, which is what I thought at first, but all all or any enemy. So basically it's a it's a one-time use. Um and your one-time use, your thing will do one extra damage. I wonder how much of a downside it's gonna be that these will uh fill you know, take a battlefield slot. Like like you are going to have to play a good amount of spells and skills to do damage when you're playing powder kegs cuz otherwise you could like if you're just like drawing units and uh you can't find something that does damage and then they're just like sitting there I mean I guess I guess with the new rules the rules change so now if you if your board is filled up you can actually play something else and then obliterate so yeah I guess it's not too it's not going to be really too much of a downside 
<laughs> yeah, you can increase the self damage with Vladimir's Vladimir powder keg. Go crazy. <laughs> yes, this is great. That's yeah, this is great with like misfortune. And so yeah, putting this playing this after they attacked on their turn and then uh, you untap with like a misfortune and an attack and now your powder keg does two to, you know like now the those attack triggers do two to everything um yeah definitely really strong there so this is this is a pretty good card because it's a two mana two two also um so th i expect this to see a good amount of play especially um when powder kegs will be available will be uh, valuable and we'll we'll have more powder keg synergy and everything so this is yeah that's a good card there all right, a hired gun, a two mana, two, three. That's pretty good. When I'm summoned, grant the strongest enemy vulnerable. I like this card. That is good. Getting, you know, giving the strongest enemy vulnerable. Um, it is not always easy to kill the strongest enemy whenever you're attacking. Um, you don't always have an attacking creature that can trade profitably with their strongest enemy but basically this is a two mana two three that can just gain just grant you value and you know like um yeah it can can help you fight a karma for sure um again the grant the strongest enemy vulnerable that's not just an end of turn thing that's a forever thing so even if you don't attack that turn um even if you play you can play that on your opponent's turn untap and then that thing's still vulnerable. So basically everything gets to challenge that card. So real good against champions, basically. It's a it's a good, especially if you're like a, a creature heavy deck, it gives you a good way to help fight champions. And just something that you can also just play for two mana as a two three. You know, you can also just play it on curve. And you know, if that doesn't do anything, a two mana two three is not the worst ever. Yeah, that's also that's that's true. B squared. Like, let's say you're gonna attack. One other thing about this. Let's say you're gonna be you're going to be attacking out and attacking with a bunch of stuff, and they have like you have a bunch of two twos and three threes and stuff like that, and they have a six six, and so your six six was gonna be able to block your misfortune or you know like whatever other your fizz, your champion, whatever. You can um, you can have you can take like your worst unit that you don't you know that's whatever units you're least valuable which may be your hired gun at that point your two three and you know have that thing um challenge the thing you made vulnerable Th kind of like a lease think about like a lease um with the spiders how you normally grab like a, a big important thing and you pull it to the side um with the spider so they don't block your other thing you know hired gun basically lets you do that um which can be pretty valuable All right, make it rain. Two mana, fast speed, deal one to three different random enemies. So if you got powder kegs out there, you're doing two to three random enemies. You're doing three to three ran to three different random enemies. Um, you know, like cards like like this is great against like you know just spiders and. Um, yeah, any decks going wide. This is really good. You're you're doing three total damage for two mana. Very good against decks that go wide. Um, you know, Withering Whale does one damage to all their enemies, and it costs five. And then, you know, you get to gain three life also. But this costs only two mana. Um, if they have, you know, if they got three en enemies out there, doing one to all of them. Um, this does not. What? I would. This should not trigger Ezreal at all. But B squared says, according to the game developers, this triggers Ezreal three times. There's no way it should. But yeah, but no, this this um, it does just say enemies, so you would think that they could trigger the Nexus. Yeah, the Nexus does count as an enemy. So you'd think like this would be able to hit the Nexus as one of those. Huh. Yeah, if that triggers Ezreal three times, that's pretty ridiculous. 
I mean, I don't think it should trigger Ezreal at all, but... Because you're not really... Because... Alright, so I would assume that this would kill Fizz. That would be my assumption. That if they had a Fizz, that they can't... You can't play a spell and cancel this. But... That would be my assumption, is that this would kill Fizz. But if it triggers Ezreal three times, then... That means that it would be targeting, and therefore, because Ezreal triggers on targets, and therefore if it's targeting, you would be able to protect Fizz from Make It Rain, and you'd be able to stop this spell. So, yeah. I mean, Beastcord says that, that the game developers were in another person streamers chat and said that it does trigger Ezreal three times so maybe they were I don't know if if so they got to patch that <laughs> yeah because it really shouldn't that shouldn't be how this works um yeah so if it, if it does yeah they're they got if it does they need to fix it anyway just on its own though what Back to the actual card, face value, this is a, a pretty good card, a pretty valuable card. I think this is a just a fine two mana spell. Um, there's not a lot of great two mana spells, but I think this is this is definitely a really good one, especially with um, the damage being valuable, and especially with like the the ability to assuming this can hit the opponent also and turn on plunder. Um, but yeah, I think this is good. And Fast speed is really nice also. You can get rid of, um, like, fast speed is perfect. You can get rid of barriers. You know, when people go straight to attacks, people have barriers. Um, you know, this can this can get rid of barriers. But. Very good card. More powder. Right. And it's also a two-mana spell for the two-mana spell stuff that we talked about previously. All right, more powder. Again, another two mana spell. Get two powder kegs. Um, you know, I I don't know if two powder kegs are worth a card, but maybe depending on depending on what you're doing, what you're playing, um, we'll have to see. Um, but I could I could see you know really wanting powder kegs or wanting two mana spells, um, and more powder being worth a spell. But we'll have to see. Pilfered Goods. Draw a card from the enemy deck. Or Plunder, draw one more. I like this card. These draw cards from enemy decks are look pretty strong. But this, of course, if you can plunder, two mana, draw two. And they're both from your enemy deck. So now they don't have those cards anymore. And you do. That's pretty good. Burst spell speed. So, you know, you can cast it anywhere, anytime. Um... Whenever you're doing damage to your opponent. Pretty cheap at only two mana. Pretty cool little, little card. A lot of synergies with either casting spells and two mana spells and stuff like that. Um, yeah, again, Maokai, get rid of some cards. Like, this is great with Maokai. Af again, after, you know, if you level up Maokai, they got four cards left, and then boom, draw two of them. That's pretty cool. You yeah, know, for your, your mill strat. I like it. I like Piltered. Pilfered Goods. Cool card. Bubble Bear. Bubble Bear. Awesome art. It's really fun to say Bubble Bear. I don't know if I've ever said Bubble Bear before one minute ago. That may have been the first time in my entire life I've ever said Bubble Bear. But now I don't want to say anything else. I just want to say Bubble Bear. Over and over. Bubble Bear. Wow, that's fun. That is fun. Bubble Bear. Try it. You can try it out at home. That is fun to say. Bubble Bear. <laughs> it's a Bubble Bear. Bubble Bear. Anyway, I don't think we're ever playing this card ever. Um, it's an 06. It has elusive, it has a tune, but sorry, Bubble Bear.
Double trouble. All right, bubble bears and double trouble. Oh no, poor bubble bear and double trouble. Anyway, so three mana, summon two random one cost followers from any faction. So we saw a ton of new one drop followers from this faction. I mean, sure, I guess, I guess this region did give um, Professor Von Yip a lot of new spells. Um, <laughs> all right, we need a meme tier Monday deck starring Bubble Bear. All right. But yeah, Professor Von Yip can get some more fun tools with Double Trouble and all the new one cost cards, I suppose. Golden Narwhale. Narwhale. It's a 2 4 elusive for 3 mana, and it's also vulnerable. This is not a good card. You do not want your cards to have vulner vulnerable because now your opponents can steal gold. You know, they, they can challenge Golden Narwhale. This is not a good card. Um, I mean, you could just play like a, you know, two mana, two five. Generic wise, or you can play the Electro Rig that's a, or sorry, three mana, three mana, two five. You can play the Electro Rig that's a three mana, two four that has that cool support ability. I don't think we're going to play an elusive, vulnerable thing. Yeah, okay, so the 5 mana 7-7, seven, seven, that's a token that you give your opponent? Okay. No, you can't You can't even do that with standalone, nah. Jagged Taskmaster. Master. Alright, so 3 mana 4-3, Plunder, grant 1 cost allies everywhere, plus 1, plus 0. So, you know, you have to plunder. This is just a one-time effect. It's not like, you know, every single time, but so just... If, if you've dealt damage to your opponent, then you play this 3-mana 4-3, then all of your 1-cost allies get plus 1, plus 0. Which, again, we saw a ton of 1-cost allies, but still, those 1-cost allies... The problem with 1-cost allies is they die super, super easily, and giving them plus 1, plus 0 doesn't really stop that. They not only die super easily, but they also don't do much damage or attack that well or really affect the battlefield that well. The, giving them the plus one that helps that part but they still die very easily it i mean you could what if this said grant one cost allies everywhere plus one plus one are we are is that too powerful are we talking too too powerful for that i don't know i think the only place we could maybe play that like all those one drops that we had were all just very mediocre and kind of bleh I feel like where we could maybe play this is with Spiderlings. Um, maybe if we're going Shadow Isles plus this and going Spiderlings and, and uh, you know, then you got a Taskmaster and then all of your Spiderlings get plus one, plus zero. I think that's where I'd probably most like to play the Taskmaster. And maybe that's why it's not plus one, plus one. Because if this was plus one, plus one on Spiderlings, that could be huge. That could be really good. Um, but, yeah, plus one, plus zero. Yeah. I mean, it's still a three mana, four, three. Like, that's, that's not bad, a three mana, four, three. So, uh, yeah, I think this is, like, with Spiderlings. I think that's, like, really where, if you're going, if, if you can go Bilgewater Spiders, if there's other things to be doing with Bilgewater with Spiders, I think that's where you can play some Taskmaster. Noxus one drops are pretty decent. I don't. There's probably better things to be doing at three mana though, but maybe. Yeah, because it is good stats. This is the kind of card that could get better over time. Also, if there's other, like spiderlings, if there's other tokens. Like that, they're easy to create that are one cost tokens like Spiderlings that, that come up in, in future sets. This is a card that, this is a card to kind of remember 
that could turn into a really good card um, also in a future set. Yeah, it's kind of weird for an epic. Maybe I, mean, I guess it's probably epic for uh, for expeditions. I guess it's not a card that they want too much of in expeditions. I guess. I think that's I think that's why it's epic. Is like, there's a lot of one one cost cards, and maybe there's like, you know, maybe there's a one of like the expedition decks, like the um, the strat the strategies the the you draft. Um, has to do a lot with those one drops and they don't want they don't want it something that's too common. Alright, Jaw Hunters, three mana four one with challenger. When I'm summoned, create a random sea monster in hand. I like this card. We're gonna be talking a lot more about sea monsters in the next uh Bilgewater one with the four through nine CMC, because that's where most of the sea monsters are, of course. But Jaw Hunters does get to, um, you know, so we're talking about, it does get to replace itself. It does draw a card. You know, think of Shadow Assassins, three mana, two, two, elusive, draw a card. This draws a card. Your card you're drawing is a random sea monster. Um, so, you know, you probably want to be playing other sea monsters, but even not necessarily, I mean, you can still play this in just like a mid-range deck, like where you want this kind of challenger. Like, 4-1 Challenger, that's basically a removal spell. You know, it's kind of like the Trifarian Glory Seekers, but this can block. Being able to block with a 4-1 is really nice. Um, this is a good card. This is a good card. I'm, I'm going to be playing a good amount of this card. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a deal 4 damage removal spell, you know, that is vulnerable to removal itself. But even if they use removal on your Jaw Hunters... Like if they if they spend a removal spell on your jaw hunters, um, you probably already got to challenge, and then they use removal kind of thing uh, that helps like that combat because whatever you challenged didn't get to block other things. But you also get to you know you get to win that trade by creating a random sea monster in hand to be able to use all, um, also later on. Um. There is some deep synergy with sea monsters, but uh, sea, sea monsters are basically just like, you know, big old creatures that you just play at your top end. And so like this, this kind of card could let you play like an aggressive mid range strategy where you don't have to put cards in your mid range. Like you don't have to put six, six drops or seven drops or anything like that. At, at your top end because you're playing jaw hunters and maybe you have something else also that create your top end cards like maybe you have jaw hunters and you are playing um vanguard sergeant that whenever you play that you know you create a four demacia and so you can have like a couple of things like that so you can keep your curve low but then you still get to create big um flashy cards that help you finish the game out but you don't have to worry about like drawing them naturally um in your opener and stuff like that so yeah so that that's kind of nice so you you know we're start you're starting to get a, a critical mass of cards like that that you can um put together and you know have that as a viable strategy and i like that all right so this is the sea monster payoff this is card is good three mana burst speed lure of the depths reduce the cost of sea monster allies everywhere by one and draw a sea monster so um it's basically it 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 uh you know it replaces itself you draw a sea monster but then also you reduce the cost of your sea monster allies everywhere by one so <clears throat> this can help you um like this is like a ramp you know this is it's basically like Catalyst of Aeons, except for better, because you know all of your sea monsters. Like it, it can affect like a lot more things. It can kind of help you double spell if you get multiple of these. Then even the late game when you get to ten mana, you know like those other things still cost less. Um, and it's burst speed. Um, you get to play this on turn two, because you know turn one you don't play anything. Turn two you can have lure of the depths. Turn three 
and you draw a sea monster turn three you can play this jowl hunters and do whatever you want with this thing and then starting turn four you can start playing your uh sea monsters that you already reduced their cost by one um yeah this card this card's good this is definitely this is what can make like a dedicated sea monster strategy work there's not like a ton of sea monsters we saw one in um uh shadow isles i think there's just the one uh, there's not a ton uh, but again, we'll we'll get to we'll get to them in the four through nine section. But they are pretty synergistic together, and so we want to you know you're probably going to be building a like if you're playing this you're probably playing a whole bunch of sea monsters. Now there is one other option that I also just thought of while we while we've been talking about this I just thought of this. What if you play Lure the Depths as a tutor? We'll have to go through. But what if, is there like one singular sea monster? that turns out to be incredibly good really powerful that you could just use this as a you know kind of like an entreat where entreat like if you just play one champion you draw your champion this can be three mana draw that seed monster and reduce its cost by one maybe i don't know maybe maybe there's um maybe there's some sea monster that will be really good like that we'll, we'll kind of see but yeah i like lure the depths this is pretty cool because sea monsters that sounds pretty interesting. Uh, we've talked about Misfortune. Monkey Idol. This one's weird. Three mana, zero four, immobile. So this says can't attack, can't block, and then it also says immobile. I don't know how that's supposed to be different from a powder keg. Bubble Bear. A powder keg just says can't attack, can't block. It doesn't say the word immobile. I think, yeah, so I, I would assume that immobile just means can't attack, can't block. I mean, like, this doesn't say the word vulnerable, right? Because it, there's just not room. So I guess it's it's a, it's a, it's probably just a, um, like, this says the word burst because there's room, but other spells that don't have the room don't say the word burst. So I think it's, I think that probably means if you can't attack and can't block, that's immobile. But there's just room to actually write the word here. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, so so we have a name for can't attack, can't block. So that's, that's the word immobile. All right, anyway, so it's a three mana 04 round start. Deal two to me and summon a powder monkey. Powder monkeys are one mana, two ones that are ephemeral. And they have last breath, deal one to the enemy nexus. So you need your, you really want your powder monkey to die in combat um, to be able to trigger plunder. Right, like you don't want it to just this thing to just be alive, and then at at like the end of turn, then it dies because it's ephemeral and it and it does one to the enemy nexus, and then you can't play plunder spells afterwards. So you really want that thing to die in combat. Um. Yeah. So then, so all the things that yep, yeah, all the things that want you to do damage to the enemy nexus, all those kind of things. Uh, synergize with the monkey at all um, so i guess you, you probably want to play the monkey idol on your opponent's turn where you get to untap and round start create the powder monkey right away that gets to attack and then on their turn you make another powder monkey that can block and then your idol dies I'm not sure if you're like really supposed to be like pumping up the toughness of this thing and trying to keep this thing around longer so you can keep making powder monkeys like maybe seems like that's a lot of work to go through for some powder monkeys yeah it's kind of like used cask salesman but yeah it's different from used cask salesman but it's kind of like that the thing is is this thing kills itself like your opponent doesn't need to spend a card to deal with your monkey idol. So this card's just on its own, this card's card disadvantage. Like it's it's never you know, it doesn't need to trade with a card. They can just, you know, they'll take some damage 
from powder monkeys and stuff like that but it's like your opponent gets to choose if they want to use cards to deal with monkey idol and powder monkey or if they don't want to use cards if they just if they have like a lot of life they can just use some life and it'll just go away so it's not like you don't have like a, a three two body that that stays around and does stuff like with used cast salesmen um <laughs> play it for the monkeys man yeah, I, I don't think this is that great. Because, yeah, it is a mobile. It doesn't get to attack or block. You don't even, you, like, you don't even get to throw the 4 in front of something if you want to chump block. You can't even do that. Um, it does have some synergy effects. You know, like, there's, you know, obviously, like, these powder monkeys doing one damage to the enemy nexus. Like, there there is definitely some synergies with that. Um, but I'm not sold that this is going to be worth playing. I, I think it's probably not my my guess with this is not my guess is this is not good enough um tough would make him last longer yes because it does two to me so if you gave this if you like chain vest the monkey idol then it would start taking one damage so it'd be around for four turns if you use a chain vest on the monkey idol um, chain vest in general and just toughness in general, but you know, especially chain vest because it only costs one mana. I think that chain vest is is really valuable with this set. This set's all about doing like one damage to stuff. Except like this new region, in particular, is all about doing like one damage um, and one toughness things. And I feel like um, I feel like just the keyword tough has gotten more valuable after this set. All right, we have, um, let me do a little refresh here. Okay, we have Petty Officer, a three mana three one. Whenever you play it, summon a powder keg or a random one cost ally from any faction. And I, I don't think that you choose that. I'd assume that's a random. I don't think I don't think it'll be like a choice. Like, do you want a powder keg or a random one cost ally? Either way, I'm not I'm not super. Oh, you think you think we choose it? If you, it's definitely a lot better if you choose it, of course. So like, obviously you want to choose things, but it is a choice. Okay. Yeah, that that comma bothers you. Yeah, summon a powder keg, comma or yeah, like there's. Why, why is there a comma? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, still, still probably not that good. Three mana, three one plus, you know, like a random one drop. Yeah. Or three mana, three one plus a powder keg. Also kind of meh. It's true that both options aren't, aren't spectacular. So... Yeah, I probably won't see that much play. Dude, they... <laughs> I will say it is. it has been surprising how poor the, the card text and, um, you know, everything is. Like, it has been... That has been surprising. Um, just the... The editing, I guess you can say. All right, pick a card, any card. Three mana, burst speed, shuffle a card from hand into your deck to draw three fleeting at the next round. So you have to spend three mana and this card, and you have to shuffle another card from your hand into your deck. So you're down two cards and three mana, but for that cost, then the next turn you get to draw three that are fleeting. So you have to, the three cards that you draw, you have to then be willing basically to play all of those cards to, to get a little bit of advantage. I don't like this. The obvious reason why this is printed and the whole obvious thing about this um, is with... Um, uh, oh gosh. What's the name of this card? What's the name of this champion? Always forget this name. Twisted Fate. Just such a weird. All right, Twisted Fate. Okay. 
We just got a preview. I'll, I'll, I'll get better at the names, but... All right, so, so obviously the, the, the whole thing about it is Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate levels up whenever you draw eight cards, whenever Twisted Fate sees you draw eight cards. So, like, that's that's the whole thing here is, you know, pick a card, you get to draw three. Uh, with that being said, I don't think this is any good. I, I wouldn't... I myself wouldn't play this in a Twisted Fate deck. I, I just don't... I think this is, this is just too risky. It's too... Um, it's too much cost for not enough payoff. And it's... And the payoff's very risky. Because um, maybe, like, the three fleet... Because you're, like, taking a turn off to, like, play this thing. Or, like, a lot of mana off, at least. And then maybe the three cards that you draw that are fleeting... Maybe you can't really play those because you have to play something else. You have to play, like, whatever removal spell. And those weren't, like, your removal spells. And then you just wasted all this stuff. Um, so, no, I, I am not... I'm not in there. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess, why do you have shuffle? I guess it's, like, just the flavor of, like, shuffling your deck. Guess, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm off this card. Pocket Aces, three mana burst. When drawn, costs one less this round. Grant an ally, plus two, plus one. Okay, uh, this is, uh, you know, so it can't be a two mana spell, but again, you're looking at, like, Sometimes two, sometimes three. Don't think of this as like always a two because it only costs two on turns that you draw it. And so therefore you have to draw it and then you have to be able to immediately want to and have the ability to cast this for two mana. That, spe that specific card or that specific turn you draw it. You have to have the ability and the want to cast it for two mana. There's gonna be a lot of times it costs three. Um, yeah, a lot of times it costs three. It does say grant an ally plus two plus one. That is permanent. It doesn't say until end of turn. Yeah, so it's a permanent buff. Um, the, the best case scenario for this card is they use a removal spell on your... Oh, man, it's, it's just getting later in the night. What's the champion called? The one drop champion? Fizz. I remembered it. Fizz. They cast a removal spell on your Fizz. You spend three mana and counter that removal spell and also grant an ally, like, you know, maybe the Fizz. Grant a Fizz plus two plus one. That's, like, the best case scenario is using this in a Fizz deck as a protection spell um, that's also, like, a counter spell. Um, <laughs> yeah. Fizz. Um... That's, yeah, that's best case scenario. Are you playing this in, like, other decks? Like, like a stand, you know, if you're playing, like, a standalone type deck, do you have this, like, three mana to grant one toughness? You know, when we have things like, uh, you know, Radiant Strike that already um, gave plus one, plus one for one mana. This is permanent, though. I don't know. At three mana, this, is, this costs a lot. I think that maybe in a Fizz deck, and besides that, Probably not too much. Yeah, like I'd rather have like twin disciplines a lot of the time. If that was like honestly, that's probably more valuable as plus one plus two. It, that's probably more valuable as plus one plus two than than plus two plus one. All right, we have sleight of hand. This card is crazy. So it costs three mana, it's slow speed. You have to have plunder turned on to even cast this. That plunder is big that you have to have plunder turned on. Draw a random non-champion from the enemy hand. If that plunder thing wasn't there, this would be a pretty good control card, especially for control mirrors. But, so that means draw, that means you take it from their hand. So you can have a card in hand that you want to play, that you need to play, non-champion they can play the slide of hand and just take it you obviously don't get to see their hand you don't get to choose it does say the word random but um this is basically uh basically a two for one you know like you you draw a card and remove a card uh from the opponent so like that's two resources that you're up for this one card 
uh, you know, your opponent's down a resource and you um, stay the same. So it's, it's net one positive resource for you, but it's two for one, which is net one positive. Um, yeah, very good against combo decks. Uh, yep. Good against like the slow, you know, real good against the slower decks. This is not, you know, against aggro, you don't have time for this and you're not going to plunder anyway. This is a basically a dead card against aggro, but against like all these Karina control, like you take their Ledros. Thank you. Um, you know, or, you know, as you know, against the Ezreal decks, so like against these slower decks, very good. Um, yeah, you steal, yeah, you steal their card. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be some RNG blowouts for sure, yep. Um, uh, but yeah, if you can turn, um, if you can, like, the more of these that you cast, also kind of the better, right? What if you have, like, this with, like, Karma, like, leveled up Karma, where you, where you double this up? Take two cards from their hand. That's busted. Yeah, the plunder part is hard to do in control. I mean, there is, you know, direct damage. Um, and, you know, maybe you have, like, some elusives. Because there are, there are definitely some elusives in this in this uh, region. But, you know, like, with maybe with Ezreal. Like, you hit him with an Ezreal or hit him with a Mystic Shot. You know, Static Shock. You know, like, it, maybe if this is, like, a... That's a real kind of card. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, Karma Discard. <laughs> um, yeah, this card. This is going to be... It's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm surprised that they printed this because there is no, like, discard in Legends of Runeterra. This is, like, the first discard kind of card because discard's not something that people really like playing that much. Um, cause this does lead to a lot of feel bads. So I'm, I'm a little surprised they, they printed this card to be honest, but the plunder, I think the plunder really holds this back. Like if this didn't have plunder, I think this would see a lot of play, but the plunder holds it back. Um, all right. Slot bot. 3 mana 03, round start, grant me plus 0, plus 1 for each round, for each card you drew last round, then shuffle my stats. So whenever you play this, assuming you just drew your normal card for turn, and then, you know, play this at like the end of turn, you untap, this thing will then be, have 4 total power and toughness just shuffled. So it'll be like a 3 mana 2-2. Two -two. Or a 3 1 or a 1 3, you know, or something like that. And then, um, and then the next turn, if it stays alive, you draw your one card, then now it has five total numbers. Obviously, if you draw more cards, you can, you can increase it even more, but. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I guess you could hit a, get a 4 0 or a 5 0 and it dies. Um, I guess, I guess it could happen. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we're ever playing slot bot. Maybe, maybe for meme deck Monday, but I don't think so. All right. It looks like slot bot was the last three mana card. Okay. So we'll take a, take a short break here. We'll, uh, um, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Um, you know, let me know what you think of these cards. Any cards I'm underrating, overrating, anything we had wrong, let me know in those YouTube comments. Um, and also, which which cards or champions are you real excited about? Anything that you want me to build right away? Like, what should we build tomorrow? Y'all let me know. Um, but that's our first part of Bilgewater. We're going to now start uh, all the cards, CMC 4 through 9. So we're going to start the second half of Bilgewater coming up next. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.